Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. This is the 2021 intro. Yeah. That's it, that's the intro. It's a new year. That's cool. <laughs> uh, I did, I talked about the New Year's in the last episode, and I was like, yeah, it'll probably be like, I'm probably record this. Yeah, it's, it's 3 a.m. on January 1st. Where did the time go? I don't know. I gotta say, you know, I just realized none of my neighbors set off fireworks. That's, that's never happened. They were setting off fireworks in July. What the heck? Well, anyway, hope you had a safe, happy new year. Uh, it's my, it's usually my favorite holiday, but I really didn't do anything this time. Because, you know, I don't go to parties or anything like that, but every year I would, like, hang out with some friends and voice chat, or, like, uh, one year I watched the in-game fireworks when I was playing WoW, and I sat down with all of my friends and we just watched those go off and shot the shit. But, yeah, a lot of the time I'm actually out of town. I don't know if I've been home for New Year's in a long time because I'm usually visiting my grandmother. But, anyway, you didn't come here to hear that. It's... 2021 2020 more like just play monster train uh yeah anything i really have to tell you not really it's it's late it's 3 30 in the morning i uh i don't actually i haven't checked the comments i don't think that there's a request but let me take a little look shall i yeah let me refresh even let me be sure. I don't have a whole lot in terms of new content coming up to tell you about. Cranberry and I are still recording Final Fantasy XIII 2. We spent two hours recording tonight. Uh, I do not see a request. Okay. We're just playing random. Cool, cool. But no, Cranberry and I have been recording. The game is... Uh... <laughs> it is something. Uh, but... Other than that... I have, a, I have a Retropolis video that I've been talking about. I meant to put it up today, but I forgot. And then, yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. Not really much. I I just, I've been, all of the content that I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to spend all of my free time making new and interesting content. But it's all like, I'm trying to make some different, longer form content and not just these Let's Plays only. Just because I want to try out some different stuff. But it is what it is, I suppose. Either way, for now, no matter what, uh, until I am, like, actually just so sick of this game that I am uh, dreading playing it, Monster Train will be here for a while. And that's my expectation, anyway. For now, though, we hit, you know, clan combo so nice, they made us play it twice. <sighs> Double Barrel Daedalus, Shadow Arc is Diligent, Seraph Explosive, uh, Morsel Making, and Memories Melted. We are Exile Melting, Exile Umbra. Uh, okay, I mean, give me Spike's Fade here, I suppose. Oh, excellent. I mean, the good side is that we have Fade, so we are strong in that regard. I'm gonna play Firelight because I played Eternal Flame recently. Jack Strips is really good. Okay, we're fine. Jack Strips is really good. Uh, I'm very glad that that exact that is the exact reason to look at fade first. If we got spikes fade, jack strips would be horrible. But we got firelight fade, so jack strips is great. Very happy that I did that in that order. Do I want to take this armor trial? I do. I really do because I want to not have umbra units in this run. So I'm going to. A lot of uh, a lot of these recent runs have been me realizing that I should be a little more aggressive with my trials than I am typically, and so that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take this trial. I would definitely skip this trial normally. So this is a definite change of pace, and we'll see what happens. A little concerned about this double primitive mold draw. If we don't hit a primitive mold next turn, we are in a bit of trouble. But, you know, let's just hit it. Yeah, it's easy, right? You just catch it. You just, you just don't miss. It's kind of free. Uh, if I play explosive, I'll take nothing from this, right? Yeah, because you'll die from the jack strips. Uh... 
taking 30. I'll do more soul making. It's fine. I'm wondering if I should hold on to memories. I think I shouldn't. Should I keep this train steward? I don't think I should because there's a 50-50 on hitting fade or an explosive. I recognize that when I did it. I think that if we hit the explosive it's also fine, right? Because we just... The, the plan shifts if we hit the explosive here and we just try to kill the boss by playing the explosive. Like, we play both of these down here and we just do 100 damage to the boss and it's fine. Uh, I am going to take 12. This is a combat where taking the armor trial is very risky, I will say. We risk 12 plus this Discipled Foot Soldier here as well, but I wanted the unit. I think that it's going to end up being worth it. Uh, we will see. As long as, no matter what I hit here, I think we're winning. Oh, wow, not... Oh, because she doesn't die. Look at that. She doesn't die in time for the burnout. Huh. Interesting. I need to... Like, almost certainly... I don't take any more here, right? Yeah, okay. It was it was a risk. We took 12 damage for the trial. Which, is it worth it? This is an excellent question. We'll see what the unit is. That's, uh, that's what I'm thinking. Molded is great. Very good target there. I think that I need to draft less bad cards. Like, Space Prism is cool, but I don't need it. If we want that space, I'll just take a space upgrade. Yeah, these are good units. I like playing with Paraffin Enforcer, so I think that with Firelight Fade, there are basically two ways to think about what you want to do. You can either think about it in terms of you want to fill a floor with four one-space units and maximize the benefit, or two good two-space units that you then like multi-strike up and then uh, you have them withdraw priority, right? Because the, the ideal unit in this run is definitely just draft four times. Like, if I could choose a unit, I would choose draft, but the problem is, like, with hinging it all on draft, I feel like you run the risk of, oh, I didn't draw draft at the right timing and now I just die to Daedalus, right? Once you remove out some cards and duplicate the drafts, that becomes less of a worry. But back to the matter at hand. Wickless Tycoon is a good choice because he makes us a lot of money. He makes us, a, like, a ton of money. Paraffin Enforcer is a good choice because he scales himself. And he, like, like so he's he's gonna scale on top of the little fade scaling. And uh, Lady of the House is a bad choice. Yes. It's never Lady of the House. It's one of these two. It's the, it's the, the classic question. Is Paraffin Enforcer better because he scales up a bunch of rage on himself? Or is it better to just get a bunch of money? I am gonna be honest with you. I think it's the money. This is our only melting choice, also. I'm pretty sure it's the money. I think that they're going to be very similar units as long as we hit multi-strike. The idea here is get multi-strike onto this guy and plus 25 and then duplicate him. And that's our floor. Him plus another one of him plus fade. And that floor should just crush. It's a shaky formative section. I will roll this, even. It's quick, okay. I can just take the plus 25 and it's fine. Rolling it is good because if this is like a 115 cost multi-strike, then we can skip this banner for sure. Oh, I'm skipping this banner anyway. That's fine. Uh, I want to consider... I want to consider these. I think it's okay. We're gonna have to look out for Diligent Seraph, I'm not gonna be able to hyper remove, but I'm also going to remove a lot just because it is uh, good to remove to make Fade a little more consistent. Uh, might even go so far as to duplicate some Moldeds or something like that, I'm not sure. We're playing middle floor here. Am I gonna just throw this explosive down? That's a tough question. I think I am going to play it, but I'm gonna play it up here so that it gets the benefit from Fade. I don't think it matters a lot. I recognize as well that I'm going to be taking Sinner's Burdens for what I've done, but at the end of the day, I want the money. If I put... Okay, there's a way to do this. I think. Or not? 
she's just gonna give plus five plus five, right? I, I obviously I can stop this damage by putting the explosive in front, or I can put it on the upper floor. I think that it is important for Fade to die, so that I can get her reformed and get her replayed. I'm always gonna play that flank. Yeah. Like I can get the extra five damage by playing Rubble Morse. It'll die or like get eaten rather, but I can get a temporary plus five. But it's really not that worth it, is it? I don't want to take five, though. Do I want to take five? I think that it's okay for me to play it and just... I don't want to drop to five. Not with Double Barrel Daedalus. I should do this. That's a tough choice, though, I think. The lack of multi-strike plus the... Uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have taken this trial. Wow, I also... Wow, I'm like... Fucked. That is so bad. We didn't hit any of the reforms? Oh my god. Well, on the bright side, we're just gonna reform everything next turn, I guess. Firelight fade, baby. That's what I like to see. Uh, this is a 50-50 to hit the explosive. We want to hit explosive here. Nice little fade. Uh, so we're in an interesting position here on this molded. What's the best thing to mold? I don't know, they don't keep their burnout. I guess I'm just gonna kill the boss with explosives. I'm pretty sure I just have to take 10 from this Forge Disciple because I my floor died. It's all dead. So I just have to like hit the boss as much as I can and pray that we don't lose. I'm pretty sure that this is what we are. Uh, forced into. Now we have three primitive molds coming up. So we should be able to get there. The trial. Oh, wait, they're gonna. Sinner's Burden. Oh, this is the this is the exact reform that we need to see here? Okay. We're fine. Uh, I took 10 from the trial. This combat would have done four. So I took six from the trial, basically. Uh, yeah, I took six from the trial. So I would say it's worth it. I think that that's okay. I will take another molded. All we care about is reforming to stabilize from disasters, and I'm not gonna add anything else. If only, if we had multi-strike, I just go to the right, I duplicate, I take the pyre, health, we're cruising. I go left here, though. We look for holdover. Permafrost is okay. Permafrosting a molded lets us set up for uh, recovering from a disaster happening. And then I roll because if there's a 120 cost molded, I want to be able to take it here. Or sorry, hold over. And we hold over here. Hold over on the permafrost one is interesting too. This is a skip for money so that I can buy minus one on the held over card. We are really close is how I feel. And because of jack strips, we're not in a big amount of danger from experimental Daedalus, aka double barrel. Uh, I really don't like taking this event here. I think that our power increases significantly if we get through Daedalus. So I want to think in terms of getting through Daedalus. And these are both bad for the next two. They're just straight up negatives and bad draws are what kill us. And we don't even need the energy, this is a definite skip. The only thing that I could think of taking there is the Calcified Embers are okay for having three more consume spells for Seraph, but that's not worth it. So, if I set up top floor, I, I gain an extra five in terms of money. Uh, I don't think I care. I think it's better to set up mid floor to maximize money. We need to make a lot of money on this combat. So that, uh, yeah, we want, we need to make a lot of money so that we can afford to buy multi-strike. Assuming we survive, it's possible we die to Daedalus, but once we play that held over molded, we should be cruising. Do I put down the train steward or do I hold out for the explosives? Train steward gets plus five, plus five now. I think I hold out. Yeah, I'm also not gonna have Fade die there, because if I have Fade die and I don't redraw, it's just rough, you know? We're gonna play it cool, we'll wait for the Molded to come in. Or, you know, wait till it's just a, uh, it's just Force. 
And we're gonna be taking like six here, I think. Maybe a little more. Yeah, you see, we're holding out for this to not happen to me. So. Okay. So we have to do... We have to do a little thinking here. We have to do just a touch of thinking. It's probably right, considering our upcoming draws, it's probably correct to start using explosives to try and min-max our uh, pyre health, right? Because, okay, there's there's two ways to think about this. I, th I actually think we have to be putting this mid floor, right? This floor is really weak. This floor is going to really struggle to kill Daedalus if I'm not getting a lot more value out of it than this. Assuming that Fade dies and is played every turn for the next three turns, which doesn't happen, by the way. Uh, but assuming the best case, we're all not really that strong, even still. So I think that I have to just take the Pyre hits that we're going to take here, and they're going to be a lot. And sometimes we kill the Infiltrator and get some money off of that. Uh, but I can't play these. Oh. We might just die the Daedalus here. I think it's possible. If we do, I want it to be known. I feel like we did play... We played it to the best of our abilities. It's very, very lucky that he put this bomb here. And we get 50 damage in. Uh, we are taking... 8 damage, and then this is gonna do... Or no, not 8. Uh, 2 and 4. We're taking 6, and then this is going to do... Uh, 6. So we're gonna go down to 4 HP here. But I think that it matters. Like, I think we actually have to. Or we're gonna die to Daedalus anyway. I feel like it's really close. I could be wrong, but I feel like this is really, really close. And it matters to play it like this. Uh, there's no reason to put Fade up there. I can put her down here. I can put her down here with two train stewards, actually. This makes sense, because our Molded is held over. I don't know why that's been happening. Our Molded is held over, and it's a choose, so we just get to get a little more damage out of that play. And we're going to four health. It's scary. But I think that we have to, right? Yeah, we super have to. Holy moly, we still don't win. What? Oh my god. Wait, Firelight Fate sucks. What? Oh my god, I just die anyway? That's fucking nuts. What? What do I do? What do I do differently? What? What, like, actually, what did I do wrong in this run? I'm gonna replay this combat, because it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable to me that this is not a winnable combat. There is, like, it's actually unbelievable to me that this combat can't be won, right? I must have misplayed it. There's no way that the little fade that everyone is so excited about, everyone, everyone loves Firelight Fade. There's no way that this little fade is that bad that we just die here outright. Right? So, what I'm thinking is we have to play her on bottom floor and we have to prioritize getting her killed above everything else. That's what I'm thinking. So we're gonna try it like this. We're gonna try, we're gonna try something like this setup even. And I'll throw in the place. There's just no way, right? There's no way. I... Cannot believe I cannot believe it. Fuck you, Plink. Once, once per melt uh, exile armor run, I just gotta say, fuck you, Plink. And it just has to be that way. Like this has to be the secret. What I'm doing here has to be what you're supposed to do, right? This must be the secret sauce that's gonna make it so that we don't. Uh, I don't want that to. I, I mean, I want that bomb to explode. I don't want to play Plink. This must be the secret thing. I must be... Uh, it must have been wrong for me to play her on the bottom floor like that. That's gotta be it. That's... That has to be it. Dude, if I just lose this combat anyway, I am going to be just beside myself. We're gonna learn something either way. That's the, uh, that's the good thing, at least. We are going to get to learn something. 
50 damage in there. Like, this floor looks so, like, it looks fucking awful though, right? Doesn't this look so bad? And I didn't even, I didn't even get her to die again, but... It's hopefully okay. I'm going, so we play the explosive up here. I guess I'll give it a morsel minor, why not? Like maybe the maybe it has to be you kill him over three floors with this fade, and I don't know that. I, mean, I have to bring her back, right? How could I not? Put her behind. I play train steward, but train steward's a bad thing to pull back. We want to pull back one of those units that got super buffed, I think. But they're gonna come back with one burnout and just die, right? Wow, I hit no more primitive modes. No, I hit one, right? I must have hit one. I think I just die though, right? I think I'm just dead anyway? Like there's there's nothing I can do, I just lose this combat. What? It just doesn't seem right to me. I... I don't know, like I'm actually, I'm... I'm floored. What did I do wrong? Let's think about it. Uh, there's only one answer to this question. The What I did wrong here is very clear. I had to take Paraffin Enforcer, huh? Wickless Tycoon is good. He gives us a lot of money, but without Multi-Strike, he can't do it. That's all the, that's, that's the only thing that we can take away from this, I'm pretty sure, because... Otherwise, I got the holdover on Molded, I had Fade die every round, and it just wasn't enough. So, uh, Little Fade is... Uh, Firelight Fade is not so strong that she just wins the game. Like, you can't just have Firelight Fade and go, this is my plan, this will win. Because she is not that good on her own. She doesn't turn any unit into a game-winning unit. You have to have a good unit behind. I can't just go, oh yeah, I will play with the money-making unit because we have jack strips, because then we just go to Daedalus and die. And it's not like uh, I played too aggressive in the early game and we would have been able to tank the pyre health. Like, if I was at 60 pyre health, Daedalus would have still killed me there. Because it was, like, it wasn't, it's not like it was close, right? That's the thing. That's the thing that's fucking mind-blowing to me. It wasn't close. We were off by, like, 200 damage. Getting Fade killed every turn. So, the other thing I guess you could do is you could take, uh, you could take one of the Burnout Extending cards, I guess. I don't know, it feels like Fade is supposed to do that, but, yeah. That's fucking awful. I... I have always been a big detractor of Firelight Fade, and a lot of people have been like, Yeah, Firelight Fade's really good, what are you talking about? I have a run like that, though, and I go, You really think that this unit is good? I don't know. Like, when you get past Daedalus, sure, she gets crazy powerful, but, like, it feels so bad. I hate her. I'm gonna keep playing her, though, because, you know, I don't want to play Eternal Flame. Plating Seal, Daedalus, Shadow Arcus, Chase Seraph, Entombed Explosive, Mind Collapse, Memories. We got the same Melting Starter cards there. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna play Firelight again. I don't want to play Icarus with Exile Umbra. We've gotta, we've gotta learn something. Right? I really don't want either of these. Like, I don't want Drop Cage. Uh, I don't want Volatile Gage. I'd rather have the money. I really don't like Drop Cage. Just give me the money. It's fine. I will not take this trial. It's a really bad combat to have as Firelight Fade, so I'm very glad I didn't take her. Or not Firelight, sorry, uh, Icarus. Yeah, so we're gonna try... I just, it's so hard to kill these enemies. I guess that's wrong. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, we're gonna go back to the main menu here. Nah, no, it's fine. We're gonna kill the boss with explosives anyway. I thought about it for a second. I just- we're not gonna get a whole lot of value out of Little Fade. Oh my god, you cannot draw four primitive molds in a single turn! Oh, that's rough. I mean, I'm, the, I'm very glad that I did not 
play Fade Bottom for, I gotta say. Because that draw is just a killer. If I played Fade Bottom for, I think we would have just lost. So, that's a plus, at least. My potential mistake has turned out to be very good. Although, I think we would get through this anyway. Entombed Explosive is a good unit to just carry the early game for you. At least. Entombed Explosive with Primitive Mold is a very strong thing to have. Like, maybe I'm supposed to take Hollow Drippings here? It feels so bad though, right? Doesn't this feel so bad? I think it's bad. I'm really not sure though. I'll try it. I don't want any of those cards. It's just, it's really hard because it feels like we're trying to win with only melting. Because Umbra is fucking worthless in this clan combo. Exile melting, exile Umbra with little fade. There is nothing from Umbra that I want. Like, maybe I'll take Forever Consumed. The, this clan combo is worse than Umbra Melting. There is no, like, no benefit to having uh, Exile Umbra with your Exile Melting. I can't, I can't think of anything. There is just, Little Fade has nothing to do with Gorge units, I feel like. Although it looks like I might be... No, I'm just I'm gonna go to the Remnant Banner. I really don't want any Umbra units. I guess the best thing that can be said is Morsel Master is a one space draw priority unit, so you could pick up Morsel Master, give him multi-strike, and then get four of him and combo that with Firelight, but yeah, I'd rather take Paraffin Enforcer. So that's how I'm feeling. No holdover, but we can at least have a permafrost for primitive mold. It's something. And maybe it's a waste, I don't know. We have Plink, so this combat should be free. If this combat goes poorly, I blame Plink. This is not an ideal position. I guess I'm gonna play bottom floor here. It doesn't really matter what's sitting here with Paraffin Enforcer, it just matters that there's something here with Paraffin Enforcer for him to give rage to. Alright, now we have a Blink. I don't want to clear the whole floor. Yeah, that's fine. I thought I had two Blinks for some reason. Uh, it is correct, I can't take this. Uh, I can't take this guy up here. Maybe I could, but I feel like if I let this pair up in the course and take too much damage, we're gonna die. I was already greedy by taking the trial. We don't need to push it, is my thinking here. Sure. We're, like, this should be plenty, right? Eh, never mind. We have two explosives, but it's a bad sign, I think. Maybe it's okay, just because, uh, Daedalus will look a lot different. Anyway. That's fine, I guess. Now this unit draft has to be... I guess I didn't even really need to take the unit draft, though. I think draft is fine. I don't want any of these. Like, Morsel Master is maybe not a bad take because he's a one space unit to get stats from Fade quickly. I'm gonna give it a shot. If I get multi-strike, it just goes to Paraffin Enforcer, but... Oh wait, I can't even afford multi-strike. What am I doing? At least there's no multi-strike. We can get the plus 25, which is useful. Morsel Maker. Morsel Maker, Morsel Master. And then they just spawn a bunch of morsels that fade then buffs? Ah, that's fucking weird. Isn't it? How does that work, actually? They spawn their morsels at the end of the turn, so then fade would already be dead when they got spawned. That would be a nightmare, I think. I'll put Morsel Master in front. I think we want Paraffin Enforcer at the back, although ideally we're just moving into Paraffin Enforcer alone at some point. And I'm just throwing out the rest of this, but... I'm gonna give it to Paraffin Enforcer and just put him in the back anyway. Fighting Seal Daedalus. I, you know... I think that ultimately... It was just I was too greedy, but... 
<laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I was definitely too greedy. That is the takeaway to be had here. I can't play Antumber Morsel because then Little Fade doesn't die. How about it? Uh, you could put a bomb there, I guess. That'll work. Drew, drew hollow drippings when I can't make use of it. I think Morsel Master goes behind, so he gets the rage too. I'm like, I'm trying, I'm, I'm really, I'm trying to stay positive with Monster Train. I'm trying to not, trying to not fall into just being really angry at this game. But like, I don't know, man. It's not even, it's not even that unlikely, too. But, I just, I, I fucking hate it. I just hate it. I've, I've talked at length about why I think that Blink is a bad card. So I won't, I won't hit you with it again. I'm just, I'm mentally with this game, I am at a very angry point, and the fact that I have to sit here and watch these Plinks miss the one health enemies, even though it doesn't matter, it makes no difference. We're gonna crush this combat. I, I'm still, I just wanna be angry. Just let me be angry. Just let me be mad. That's all. I don't think it's right to play Entombed Explosive down here. Just because I don't want to put him in the reform pile, basically. I want to be guaranteeing that Little Fate is reformed, but at the same time, I'm not guaranteed to draw a reform card next turn, so it's a, kind of a, just a toss-up on if it's right or wrong to play them. Uh, I think the best thing to do is this, as I've looked at it now. I think it's that. Because we we're just looking to reform Little Fade one more time. Yeah. Hey, look at this. The Hollow Drippings is going to turn out to be very nice. Cool. Great. We did it. We made it. I understand now. We can take this as a learning experience. Take this episode. It's a learning experience. This is the Firelight Fade learning hour. And it is going to be an hour. Wax and Spike is pretty cool, but Intent on Death I'm pretty sure wins. I don't want any of those. I wonder if Little Fade's buffs carry over to Legion of Wax. That changes Persist. So yeah, you would keep the you would keep the stat changes, but not the burnout with Legion. Damn, that sounds really fucking wacky. You could make a crazy big Legion of Wax with this. You would need a second little fade though, basically. This is a run to take draw, I'm pretty sure. Chase Seraph is gonna chew through that rage, but by the time that the rage matters, it doesn't matter. Or by the time that Chase Seraph matters, the rage doesn't matter anymore. Is my thinking here. Oh. I need to remove cards. That's all. I'm pretty sure that Firelight Fade is... Because basically my my feelings towards Little Fade's power levels is... I my, In my mind I just go, yeah, isn't she nuts always? And apparently that is incorrect. Very, very clearly that is not the correct take uh, takeaway here. Little Fade is generally weak up until past Daedalus, and then once you get to shape the deck, she just gets really powerful. I'm gonna take a second draft, I guess. I don't really know. I'll take a second draft, I suppose. I think that little fade you want to play careful going into Daedalus. Like, now that we're getting plus 15 on death, it's gonna get pretty big. Plus we're gonna shape the deck into little fade being very valuable. There is not a spell that matters at this point uh, that can get hit by spell shield because it's all plink. It is all plink. Okay, and I think that it is Little Fate is maybe just a play bottom floor sort of character because we need her to be dying on repeat. 
and since we don't have a way to do that ourselves, we put her on the bottom floor where the enemies do that for us. Maybe a disconnect between Morsel Master and the others, but I don't think it matters that much. He goes here, I guess. Uh, this cool marksman might actually present a bit of a threat here. Oh, I have a second draft, don't I? Maybe I wasn't supposed to play this. I don't think it matters that much. Also, Mind Collapse. Uh, the card that I was supposed to be worried about was Mind Collapse, by the way. That's fine. Yeah, once we get this intent on death rolling, it really does start to get pretty out of control. Like, this, this is what people think of when they think of Firelight Fate, I'm pretty sure. You think of this floor, where you're going, oh my god, look at how big that draft is and we're only on combat 4. But, I gotta remember the part where you just get run down by Daedalus sometimes. And, uh, you have to, and when, when I say that, what I mean is you have to remember that and plan accordingly. You have to not go, oh, I'll take, uh, Wicked Blaze, by the way. Very nice targeted reform, what we're looking for here. You can't go, oh, I'll take the money guy, because the money guy isn't good enough if you miss the multi-strike. It's a good thing that we missed the multi-strike, because it's a good learning experience. I mean, you know what I'm gonna say about these hell events being back-to-back. -back. I won't, I won't even say it. You know what I'm gonna say there. Oh, Votive Key just wins us the game, right? Being able to put Endless on this Firelight Fade is just insane. Making... That's, that's so nuts, though. Making all of these reform cards obsolete, that's insane. Uh, Mold Braces is really nice here too, because it'll give a bunch of armor, which is survivability to our frontmost unit, and there's gonna be runoff damage from Fade dying. Seems good. And I will burn two train stewards. Could also take Resin Block, but... The only unit that should be dying is Fade. The Resin Block shouldn't give us that much. What a shame too, we were on a 5 win streak. I was starting to like, I was starting to feel pretty good. I was like, oh, we made it through that Umbra melting? How bad could it be? Well, well, well. Armor 15 is giving me enough concern. I don't know, I'm gonna just keep clicking Trials because I... Uh, I feel like I should. I, I feel like I need to relearn power levels at specific points in the game as well. Hmm. No draft yet. So I probably don't want to play bottom floor. I think that playing bottom floor without draft yet is just not worth it. Ideally we get the draft here. No draft. A shame. I'm just gonna take it a bit for doing what I've done here. These hands are... Not great. Yeah, we're gonna take it for taking the trial. We're gonna take a bunch of damage. I wanted to play top floor so that we could, you know... No drafts, huh? Tough. We're gonna take a lot of damage. Very, very tough. Guess that's good. We can take, uh... Oh. We have the pyre health to take it, I suppose. Gross, though. Trap doesn't die, right? I don't think so. Uh, just, I'm looking at it, right? I'm just looking. So it's... You gain 15, so you're doing 68. It's best to put this draft in the middle. If we put the draft in the middle, then he gets to multi-strike into the Master of Light. Maybe long term that's bad, but I think that's the right choice. And uh, maybe I will regret playing that primitive mold. It is possible. Oh wait, no, Fade is animals, that's right. I forgot, momentarily I forgot. It's been, it has, we've rolled into 4 a.m. We are, we are now at 4 a.m. by the way. So, you're gonna, you're gonna forgive me perhaps having momentary lapses in, uh, understanding. Or you're not, I don't control you, I suppose. You can you can decide for yourself how you feel. I leave it up to you, my uh, dear viewer. 
sure. Play the planks. They're slightly less efficient. Uh, you're dead, right? Yeah, you're super dead. Oh, I didn't, uh, didn't play that in the right order. That's okay. Oh no, I definitely... What I... I, I definitely had a, an impression of Fade before this episode of Fade is a face roll character where you just do whatever the hell you want and win. Definitely not. She's definitely more nuanced than I perhaps was aware. It's good. It's not often that I get to learn something in this game, I feel like. I really haven't spent a lot of time with some of the champions, though. Like, I, Soul Guard? Soul Guard when I don't get cold channel is a fucking mystery to me. It happens so infrequently, though. I really got familiar with the uh, the normal champions because you played them a lot. Like there was when there was only five. Now that there's exile champions and I'm cycling through ten characters, it's like I don't know. I see fade once every ten days. What do I do when I don't play spikes? I, I don't know. I'm thinking about that plus twenty five. I should grab it just because it's right to have on a draft. Please, just a little bit of multi-strike. Just one, please just one multi-strike. I have two removals at this, uh... Yeah, I should save my money. I guess if I don't get it, it's fine, but I just really want it. You understand. Uh, combustible wax is very good. Also, cleansing water is just not a relic. I Cleansing water is so bad that I don't know what I would change about it to make it not so bad. Does Shadow Arcus farm me here? He has Daze shards and he has curse shards. My units get played a lot and they die a lot. Wait, Shadow Arcus just fucking ruins us. Holy shit. These, if, I, if he puts a Daze shard down at the right time, I think we just die. <laughs> That's terrifying. I'm gonna try and get the double draft down. These curses are gonna fuck us though. Well, uh, this is this is so rough. Need to like have like double hit the frontmost enemy, or I'm just getting I'm just gonna. Oh man. Oh wow. I am taking four curses here. What the fuck? Oh my god, I'm just absolutely doomed. I'm dying because of Curse Arceus. It's not even Curse Fell, this is the easy one, but I can't draw my fucking drafts because of all the curses. <laughs> ah! Let me play the game. I have the pyre health, but this is maybe not so- oh my fucking god. <laughs> Just fucking kill me. Oh. <laughs> Put me out of my misery. I was pretty sure he was gonna do this too because I think he just cycles through the floors and alternates shards. So it was more or less guaranteed that this was gonna happen eventually. I just... <sighs> I just... I don't know what to say other than a deep sigh of... It's not even resentment, it's, it's just like... It's just a sigh of resignation. It's the sigh of put me down. I think we have the higher health to survive this, but... I don't know, man. Drawing four curses against Curse Arcus is just... Mentally, I will never recover. Like, maybe we'll come back from this on, like, on a physical level. We will make it back from this combat. I'm not sure. Mentally, though, just put me down. You win, Arcus. You win. I think I have to play the explosive to survive. Uh, if I take 12 here and then 18, 20, 24, yeah, this just, this part just kills me. Oh boy, more curses. You can argue I should have taken energy to combat the curses, but I didn't realize it was going to be so bad. I wasn't really thinking that Curse Arcus was going to put a million curses down on me here. This is 21. 
I can reform the primitive mold. Pretty sure I'm dying to Arcus if I don't take him seriously, though. Like, I'm fairly certain he's just gonna run me over if I uh, try to save six pyre health here. I guess it's 12 pyre health. That's nine pyre health, really. Arcus is not a boss for me to go, oh, we need to min max our pyre health, though. Pretty sure if I leave this curse in. I mean, I guess what do I care if I leave this curse in, though? I have to draw intent on that. Yeah, this is fine. What does it matter? It's not like playing the curse out makes us more powerful against Arcus in any way. I'm still getting run down. He's just gonna crush right through me, right? I think he just crushes me. He crushes my brittle bones and do a fine paste. Although, maybe we're gonna chip him out enough because of the burnout effect. Uh, oh my god, it's ugly. We get the draft back. Uh, it's probably fine. It, like, like I said, we, we win this combat on a physical level, but a run where I just took fucking 54 damage to Arcus, mentally, I am doomed. Take Umbra Stone. If this guy gets big enough, I think that the strike applies multiple times if he hits multiple enemies. I'm not certain, actually. I think that, because if a sweep unit has a strike effect, it applies the strike effect to all enemies. I think that if he hits three enemies, the strike effect triggers three times. Uh, sure. Why not? The multi-strike right here, what am I complaining about? All I have to do is never play another card. It might be fine. I think I have to be able to reform, though. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know, man. Like, what do I do? I'm a broken man. Monster Train... Today, Monster Train has won. Even if we take this W, Monster Train has defeated me. I do not want to think anymore. Which of these is correct? I don't think it's the second intent on death, and I don't think it's Furnace Tap. Just because Ember Drain 4... Maybe it doesn't matter, though. Maybe it really doesn't matter. Because I'm just replaying Fade, but if I take the Ember Drain, then I'm not playing intent on... I'm just gonna take Ember Stone. I feel like this is really just double draw, though, because I just... I have to draw into these drafts before turn 4. Fuck you, multi-strike. I don't want multi-strike anymore. Honestly, get the multi-strike away from me. If it's in that shop, I don't want it. Multi-strike, you had your chance. Uh, I have graduated and I do not desire you any longer. I have moved on to better tastes. Don't ask me about my better tastes. I don't want to tell you about it. No hold over here. It's fine, though. It's fine. What these am I taking? I'm taking Firelight 3. As I don't... Even though I know the names, I read that and I was like... The number... The extinguished number is green. Is it the right option? No, it's the left option. Also, this combat is absolutely terrifying. The bleed over damage that we're going to take on this Paraffin Enforcer is going to be... Rugged. I mean, shit, I think he just dies, right? Because they nerfed Little Fade's health generation. I guess that playing like this is wrong, then? Look at the Morsel Master. The Morsel Master saves him. But, like, this is wrong, I guess. Yeah, 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 okay. That's wrong as well because of the draft having... Yeah, the burnout extension as well. Okay, yeah, that's very wrong to play that there. The way that I did that was dumb. Yes. Okay. Got it. We should have played top floor. There was no pressing need to play like this. Full on monkey mode. It's okay though. Eh, maybe it's not okay. I, I will, this is the combat where we're gonna really make use of all of this reform, I suppose. Because we're gonna need it. Lord knows. 
Okay, I have this Morsel Master. I want to keep him out of the reform pool. Get this shit away from me. Uh, what am I doing here? Strong question. Very apt question to pose. What am I doing here? I'm playing both explosives top floor, or middle floor rather, and I'm playing little fade like this, I suppose. Just trying to keep Para from Enforcer alive, but he doesn't even have that much rage. This is the part where I point out that I said earlier, oh my god, I'm gonna get farmed by Chase Seraph. I didn't say that earlier. Chase Seraph is going to turn this into an Ember Drain deck whether I like it or not, though. No surprise on the explosive there. That's fine. Uh, I can put the... it's fine. It's fine. Man, with Combustible Wax, that, uh, that Burnout card's looking real dumb right about now, huh? That shit's looking real silly. It, like, Combustible Wax actually makes this feel like it doesn't... It's just not a nightmare. I don't know. I feel like my biggest gripe with Firelight Fade is I hate the way it feels reforming the floor because the burnout doesn't carry over. I really just wish that she carried the burnout over to... Uh, or like the, the burnout stuck. That's what I wish. I really wish that the burnout stuck with Firelight Fade. That's, that's what I would change about her. For sure. So that if this floor gets wiped out, I don't bring back units with one burnout when Fade has five and then she doesn't burn out and they die and I go, wow, that sucks. It just, it feels really weird, right? Because I feel like Firelight Fade, you're supposed to have the fallback plan of just reforming the entire floor and replaying it. But in practice, it just doesn't happen that way, which is strange to me. Like we do want unit upgrades. I don't know, I'd hold over intent on death, but I'll just go... The removals are nice too, but I just, I really want to see... Malt, yeah. <laughs> this shop is absolutely horrible. Uh, jack strips would have been nice. Melting spot's also kind of interesting, but it gives them burnout 4 and 30 health, which is bad. Anti-synergy between the relics there. I guess I'll take the plus 10. Sure. I'm gonna remove Morsel Master. It was a good idea. No, it was a... It's just like... He's worse than Draft. The only upside is he has... It, like, if he gets Multi-Strike, he's better than Draft because he has draw priority. We saw on Arcus why draw priority on Draft is an important uh, effect to desire. But... Ultimately, I don't think it matters. One way or another. Looks like we're playing mid floor here. So we're gonna reach a point in this run where we just stop being allowed to play cards, I think. Maybe I was supposed to hold that, but I'm not sure. Hey, hey, uh, something's missing, and I'm just gonna, like, I'm just gonna eat it because both of my. Holy moly. That's rough. That is tough. Okay, so I want to play these explosives, I think. I have to make sure that I don't lose the combat here. I just have to, I have to think in such, I have to think about not dying now. It's gonna come down to this plank, I'm pretty sure. So, Entomb- like, if I play both Entombed Explosives, this is the, what we have to think about here. She gives 5 health, so if I play both of these in front, and then I play it in Tent on Death, they will have uh, 10 health each. And then- or they'll have 6 health, and then she'll die, giving another 5, putting them at 11. And then these two light wings hit, killing them, triggering them both, it's worth 80 damage, this guy takes 105, save the health on the Paraffin Enforcer. Uh, I think we maybe just kill him. 135, okay. Dude, that's brutal. Also, this one didn't- Oh, I forgot about the armor. I forgot about the armor. Easy to forget about, I suppose. Alright, Plink. Uh, you know, years of shitting on Plink. Plink did well today. 
That's a win for Plank. Good work, Plank. I really want this explosive to die. So I should put Fade down here, I believe. And just put the draft behind. Actually, it has more health. Yeah, just put it behind. I'm... I'm able to play my draft next turn. Okay. Give me a second here. Is there a negative to playing this explosive up here? I don't think there is. And I just have to float these morsels, but it's okay because I basically just stop playing cards and I just replay Fade every turn. The two drafts being in the bottom, like, four cards or wherever they were, tough. Very tough. Oh, I'm actually just eating shit. I'm actually just gonna die. That rage dropping off is, uh, it is actually more brutal than I would have anticipated. Now we're there, though. Like, now the rage no longer matters. We have reached the point that I prophesized. We'll reach a point that the rage no longer matters. Oh, look at this. The explosive doesn't die because it has too much health now. Uh, fine. Uh, I'm not allowed to play anything else, though. Like, the Ember Drain is just going to tear us up. And, uh, I'm not convinced that this kills Seraph. Eh, this kills Seraph. Never mind. So, it was a tough episode. It was it was a tough one, for sure. And the the real thing that doesn't help my uh, my tilt in this is that I'm coming off of a particularly frustrating recording session of uh, Final Fantasy 13 2. I was already in a bit of a I was I was in a bit of a negative mood in terms of like I'm angry at this game for having questionable decision making in the game design philosophy area. And, uh, you know, I was then greeted by Exile Melting, Exile Umbra. So, I, I just want to just wanna slow this down here. 21 Rage is what they're at. Do I not? I get to see it. Okay. 21 Rage. It does trigger three times. Cool. So yeah, the uh, the real takeaway from this is uh, you can take Wickless Tycoon with Firelight Fade as your unit if and only if you're looking at a banner where you have a melting you have a melting unit banner and you know the shop is multi strike because I'm pretty sure if you have multi strike you can take anything with firelight fade maybe even with fire or maybe even with multi-strike it's too slow though i think that wickless tycoon is a uh, greedy choice that you don't get to make and i was surprised to find that out i suppose i think that there was an incarnation of firelight fade that was able to do that, but they have nerfed her a few times as well, perhaps. She used to give more health or something like that. Maybe she gave less health? I don't know. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. I feel like I should probably just play... Like I, I maybe should play another week of the Exile Champions or something like that just to spend more time with them, because I'm clearly not so hot, but... Eh, will I do that? Who knows? Maybe. I'll see how I feel at the start of next recording. Don't forget to leave me a like if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.